Get some Amber Heard into you. Mm. Anyway, let's move on now to uh, movie topic number two, and that is our review of Departures. This is a 2008 Japanese drama film directed by Yojiro Takita and starring Masahiro Motoki, Ryoko Hiro- Hirosui, uh, and Tsutomu Yamazaki. The film follows a young man who returns to his hometown after a failed career as a cellist and stumbles across work as a nokanchi, uh, a traditional Japanese ritual mortician. He is subjected to prejudice, prejudice pardon me, from those around him including from his wife because of strong social taboos against people who deal with death and attempts to repair these interpersonal connections through the beauty and dignity of his work the idea for departures arose after matoki uh, affected by having seen a funeral ceremony along the ganges when traveling in india read widely on the subject of death and came across coffin man he felt that the story would adapt well to film and departures was finished a decade later because of japanese prejudices against those who handle the dead distributors were reluctant to release it until a surprise grand prize win at the Montreal World Film Festival in August 2008. The following month the film opened in Japan where it went on to win the Academy Prize for Picture of the Year and become the year's highest grossing domestic film. What a backflip. No, we're not going to oh, distribute yeah. it. One month later, <laughs> highest grossing domestic, that year's highest grossing domestic film. Uh, this success was topped in 2009 when it became the first Japanese production to win the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. The success of Departures led to the establishment of tourist attractions at sites connected to the film and increase, increased interest in encoffining ceremonies as well as adaptation of the story for various media, including manga and a stage play. Uh, Audiences really like this one. 8.1 on IMDb, a meta score of 68. Rotten Tomatoes, gents, take your guess. 90, easy. Yeah, easy, like 93. Certified Fresh, 80%. A bit more divisive. So those who liked it, really liked it. Um, Anyway, uh, thank you to CG for donating $25 and electing uh, to for us to review, watch and review this film. Thankfully, it is readily available on YouTube. Just search Departures Film. It's the first result there. Not in high quality, unfortunately, but um, still enjoyable regardless. Um, confirming that Ben has seen this one. Terry, you're yet to. I'm going to throw... Yeah, unfortunately, I thought we were postponing the viewing of that to the next episode because of the, the Spider-Man. I do oh, apologise to CG. I will watch it and I'll contribute my thoughts later. No problemo. Mr. Movies, departures, sir. I don't want to raise Terry's expectations too much. So Terry, it was all right. It was fine. Mm. Go ahead. You go ahead. Watch it. Like, do you want me to... I, I can deafen myself so I don't hear you guys <laughs> talk about the films. Oh, that's, that's all right. I, I think I can talk about this without spoiling too much. Or much. Um, CG, thank you very much. Um, I wish I could say that in Japanese. Terry? Arigato. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. The gozaimasu part. Um, yeah. Okay, so that uh, synopsis was really useful too to, to really... Like, I wish I would have known that watching the film. Like, I got it into act, halfway through Act 2 that there was this there was this stigma around working with the dead, uh, but I didn't know it was, like, so prevalent and mm. pervasive and, and whatever yeah. Um, yeah. Until, until you just said so. So that was, that actually did help a lot in understanding the film. Also, fun fact, I um, started watching on YouTube and I went, ah, quality is not great for me. Um, so I rented it for myself on iTunes and um, the subtitles changed. Like I watched like the first few minutes and the sub- it's like saying the same thing, but using completely different words. Right. Which um, is my first point. Like, I don't know if it's a, it's not, it's certainly not a point for or against the film. It's just a point against watching these films because I mean, like ask anybody who writes scripts and they'll tell you like yeah they pick the words very carefully Mm. um it it means a lot so you lose a whole layer of uh telephone or chinese whispers is happening in the middle getting it from japanese to english into your brain that i'm sure there's tons of fun stuff that bulky stuff that i've missed just from having to read this film instead of hearing it but Mm. um that's just a gripe i have personal gripe that i have to push through when whenever we watch a foreign language film i'm like two things like oh i have to read and second thing is like oh it's going to be like like everything is going to be so slightly different yeah and i won't know what the what the truth the real meat of it is i just yeah. have to take take this subtitles word for it <laughs> literally yeah. and so um anyways that all said i i loved the thing I loved the most from a movie watcher 
point of view was how perfect this whole man works as a you know what would you call this guy he's not an undertaker he works for the undertaker he's the body preparer guy mortician mortician yeah in coffin yeah so he goes to a family's home who's experienced a passing away a departing a departure mm. oh by the way that's the other problem i cannot remember the name of this film at all i always i go okay it's definitely not departed because that's a different movie mm. and then i go straight into departing it's the departing that's what it is and it's wrong it's the it, it's not even the it's just departures, departures. yeah departures yeah. Uh, and i never get it first okuribito go. in japanese ben uh which the literal translation is one who sends off it's a japanese title there you okay go. is that great b is that b i double t o okay u r i b i t o Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, anyway, so anyway, um, quick setup. Main character falls into this line of work where he's preparing the dead for their final journey or whatever, and it's literally like a social experience. Like it's the family is present and mm. they watch and they're just sitting there and they're sobbing or they're reminiscing or they're just like just watching this this cool ceremony happen where he like cleans the body and dresses it and makeups it up and gets it ready for the coffin yeah no, no kanji traditional japanese ritual mortician so that's the line of work the the yeah the ceremony i suppose mm. i believe the movie said at the start that it was traditionally a job for the family members they would yeah. you know do this as a way of saying their final goodbyes or whatever before the before the funeral and um uh and then it became like he got you know experts professionals in making up somebody or you know in doing this in a way that you don't have to uh lay hands on your dead relative which might be too much you know so you you watch somebody else do it in a much more professional manner so really cool plot device as, as i said again like whenever you need a whenever you need a break or a turn or for the pace of the movie to change in any way a dead person you can like people die all the time it's so it's just it's so easy it's you know it's so uh, what's the word convenient it's just so convenient for the pace of the film and for the 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 way that the film can introduce a new layer of complexity or turn on the the protagonist and go into the sad times and all that kind of thing you can do anything with with a new you know i've, I've got to go and prepare this other dead person it could be someone i knew it could be somebody that um like like the one of them they arrive late and there's like this this real problem with like the, the i mean like you're 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 coming to a client who's having the worst day of the year or the worst day of their lives or whatever their mother is dead or whatever and so um it could be you know that is the the hurdle we need to jump over now or the 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 mountain we need to climb is mm. is how we're going to get over the fact that this guy is like really angry at us and when you know we're five minutes late to the appointment or what have you and and uh, so like really cool stuff like i just really liked that a lot like i really really did but it, it's a that was a film critic kind of thing you know where you just go oh that's smart how the writers could just like massage the story to do whatever they need they don't need to have a character that is going to be there until the end of the film they do have that as well but they don't have to have a character where they're building for this thing to happen and then it happens right at the right moment when it makes sense and the flow of the film has not been hindered by this and or actually been helped by it like that's a hard thing to do i'm sure but anyways i'm harping on too much um about this thing um i loved um funny moments in this it's a comedy like it's a drama like i was really upset like last week we did we did our reviews last week and we did the show literally as soon as i finished watching this one um and i was very like torn into like in two i was emotional because the movie is just really good at taking me on a journey and they did it they did a very good job of it and um there were some laughs to be had i loved um i loved how there's like a kind of um you know what that's a, a spoilery one um the, the, oh okay okay let, let, let me it, definitely myself for like no it's, it, no it's fine it's fine i i've got another one the, the name of the film, again, de Departures, uh, part of it is, like, I had no idea what the movie was about at all until, like, it's, like, 25 minutes in. It's, like, you know, 
guy loses job, he moves back home, he's looking for work, he sees this ad that's kind of obscure in Very its vague. description, yeah. and it doesn't exactly say, you'll be touching dead bodies or whatever, it's just like, mm. um, you know, working with departures. Or well, it's like the de helping people on their journey, the next step in their journey. Yeah, and he's like, oh, it's a travel agency or something, <laughs> I'm going to be booking holidays for people or whatever, and this, like, yeah, but... gotcha that the main character has is the same gotcha I got when I was just like, oh, departing, I get it, departures, I get the movie title now. I had, like, the same epiphany that he did, except he was kind of horrified of the <laughs> idea of having, like, he was he was going in there to, you know, recommend travel destinations. He didn't know what was going to happen. Um, the, just, the... the <laughs> The other thing I really liked, I don't know if this is a bad thing to say I liked it, is the fact that, like, the cause of death of everyone is they just dropped dead one day. Like, they just, they were fine, and now they're dead. And it's like, it happened, like, four times. We, we, there was no, like, cancer, you know? We've been waiting for this for months, and finally it's, it's a peaceful, like, it's, you know, a relieving time for us because it was a horrible experience or anything like that. It was just, like, she was doing her job, and she just dropped like a stone or whatever. So many people just, uh, it's a su totally sudden mm. death. Maybe um, maybe there was some uh, illness that, that was just undiagnosed or un... Because people are, you know, people are proud. Uh, they don't go to the doctor when they're sick. They work and they, they help their family and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, at least they did. Um, the, the other thing I loved was there's this... Um, there's this tiny plot device of this this idea of the traditional giving of the rock or stone where you'll pick the perfect stone that conveys how you're feeling and give it to the person or whatever it came from before letters were a thing or whatever before people that were communicating long distance or saying something to their loved ones knew how to write a letter or, or could write a letter and so um i loved the the rock that he's got from his dad is this big, bulky, misshapen, gross-looking rock. And I was like, hey, what? what? <laughs> like, it, it's, it was like the thing I thought about after the film has happened. I was like, um, what, was it, what was up with his dad? <laughs> the, whole, the whole arc, that whole thing, and I won't get into it because that's where spo there be spoilers, but there's this whole thing with his dad that, that was just kept coming up throughout the movie. And I was, I, that one was the mystery to me. I didn't, I, I didn't understand, like, I was thinking, I, I don't know, I was thinking, like, are we going to, like, have some reveal of, like, he's going to be reunited with his dad, or, or is, is it going to, like, be revealed that something else happened, like, something happened that, that, the, that the story of his childhood doesn't match up, and, and, like, I didn't know which way it was going to go, and, um, made my guess, and completely wrong, like, completely wrong, Shane, I, I was Scooby-Doing it the whole time, and, and, <laughs> Yeah, it, I was, I was, I'm just really bad at guessing what's going to happen with plot lines like that. And again, uh, but but uh, the rock thing was just really funny because it's like he's giving these nice, smooth, small, white, nice looking rocks. I'd love to receive one like that. Yeah. But what he got from his dad when he was twelve, whatever it was, it's like yeah, <laughs> it's only good for breaking windows. That rock. That's, that's all <laughs> great. For. Anyway, any, anything else I want to say has spoilers tied to it, Shane. So let me pass it back to you. Maybe we can riff some. Maybe you've got a different opinion of this film. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, I, I like uh, I, the, the biggest thing I, I came away thinking with this film the, is the fantastic job it does um, exploring that theme around the, the, the stigma of death and the um yeah the, the the shame the apparent shame that comes with with working uh in a in an occupation like this one um i think the way that it's explored with with his wife mika so daigo's main character his wife mika um man she delivers some lines that you know if if you're not in a healthy relationship where you can um have a an, an argument or a discussion or you know come to a resolution in a healthy way they they can be viewed at least in my mind as poisonous lines man like the things she says to him based on his you know newfound occupation that he's finding fulfillment in um i was i was heartbroken for him so i really enjoyed that um what you mentioned the thing about that I, I remember thinking with the with the wife and their relationship it's like it's portrayed as a very positive like they've got a very strong bond yeah but there's this thing that happened I, and again i figured it was a cultural thing that i wasn't picking up on or something but but other poorly written films do this as well where he's not 
telling her about anything that he like he's had a bad day at work and he's just like it's nothing it's fine and and like just just eating it internally and not sharing uh anything with his wife about his career and job and stuff like mm. he quits he quits his old job and doesn't really like telling her is like the hardest part of his day or, or whatever like he, I, I don't know if it's like a japanese thing like there's shame in this and it's the man's job to take all the burden of breadwinning and stuff and bring the wealth to the family without help and i don't know if that's a thing but it certainly felt like it was a thing here and i was constantly just thinking like a western like just just talk about it just talk about it it'll be fine Bring, just sit down and flesh it out and then when the like there's a confrontation about the job thing going down like she's gotten the the biggest straw man argument for what he does like she has no idea really what it entails and i'm just sitting there the whole time thinking like man if you just sit down and explain what it is mm. that you're doing for these people and for their family and so on like she'll get it i'm sure but it, like they don't do that and it's yeah. just really odd to me that that whole thing doesn't that, happen yeah i totally vibe with that as well like that was my uh disconnection from from that whole perspective because I, I i can't relate in any way to that like the idea that there might be any shame attached to working or having a job in this in this line of work or you know being in this field of 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 death um is just i i, just, I can't i honestly can't believe that anyone might think that um so yeah I, I really couldn't connect with that i like what you said ben around just the mechanics of the storytelling for this one as well you know you mentioned just a another dead person that, that depending on the circumstances it can you know shape the way that the, the story goes or the way the character evolves um i think it's true in most um films that follow a vocation right like i think about you know I don't mean to make you laugh again but <laughs> up in the air <laughs> fantastic film um you know the the, the different um, offices that, uh, you know, Anna Kendrick and and, um, and uh, George Clooney's characters would, would visit and the different curveballs that are thrown at them cause them to react in different ways and the ca characters evolve based on that journey as well. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, I thought for the, for the most part the performances were great. I really think, though, that there might have been just a what, what I felt like was a, a bit too much fat on this film. Like, when you, when you lay out the, the bits of the story in sequ sequential order, there isn't a lot explored here um but it's like a two hour and ten minute film um and yeah i i, I feel like maybe it could be i don't know a bit a bit slimmer um yeah. on, just on further reflection the whole, the whole montage just get rid of that whole thing oh, i actually I'm... i enjoy that like I, I want to talk about the music as well because the, the whole the whole cellist um pieces like throughout scattered beautiful beautiful music um and they, they bring back themes as well in those in those final moments um i do have one gripe and that was there, during that montage there's um the, the what the actions of the of of you know daigo playing the cello in some moments aren't matching the music that you're hearing um right so yeah i thought that was just a faux pas but um that's look, why i can't watch the crow anymore because he does like this guitar solo in the middle of the movie for no reason on top of the the croft or whatever he lives in and he's just going like like I don't know. It's, yeah, it's his first time with a girl or something, and um, like, and there's like this intricate guitar solo playing over top, and and they like zoom in on the the fingers on the neck of the guitar. I'm like, get away! Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't believe you. It doesn't work. Um, I honestly, I didn't notice that myself. I didn't okay. notice. Uh, I thought his um, playing looked pretty good. I, I didn't notice in the montage because I was chuckling because I was like, this montage is ridiculous. Like, he's gone out to a field with the background of the mountain and he's just sitting there just... I, I did note that um, in the in the notes that I was putting together that one of the critiques was, you know, um, uh, positive, 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 except for the overt sentimentality. And I definitely think it is a film that is very obviously and purposefully um, pulling at the heartstrings in, is, in as many ways as it can. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's um, you know speaking of shame, it's not a shame to to sort of put that forward as the, as the core beat or the core theme throughout the film. Um, but maybe it could be do could have been done, pardon me, a little bit more elegantly or less um, less forcefully. Yeah. Yeah. I almost let the movie get away with um, until you said that the 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 turn when things start going south and, and people are learning about his vocation, all that kind of thing. All that happens in the movie time in the space of like three minutes, like as far as i'm concerned everything is great he's he's learning this new vocation that he's like having a real spiritual connection to and we know why that like we learn more and more why that that is why he's 
he's like almost born for this role and a uh, job and um but then like all of a sudden like his friend from school like confronts him and and then his wife confronts him like literally the same day when he gets home it's like too convenient like it's it's like the bo the movie has been like storyboarded and there was a post-it that's like here's where everything goes wrong inside of three minutes of screen time and, and now he has a new journey to take like the you know the journey is interrupted and he's mm. got to he's got to do something about it or whatever but but too convenient um for the for yeah for the arc of the movie like it was just too well written i don't know it didn't seem natural or convincing to me but i almost let it get away with it till just now when yeah. i said it when, when i said all this Anyway, yes. uh, thank you to CG for donating to uh, Cancer Research and thank you for nominating Departures. Uh, as you can tell, Ben and I thoroughly enjoyed this one oh, and I yeah. uh, hope you do too, it. Terry. It's uh, yeah. free on YouTube. Um, the quality is not fantastic, um, so yeah, otherwise it's I a cheap rent. I did start to watch it on YouTube. I did start to watch it on YouTube, um, but then I was like, mm, the quality is not great. And I think it's like 720 or something on YouTube. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's I rough usually with that. Right. Yeah, but yeah I, I think I might hire it. Um, yeah, the the renting option for me was like a 1080 upscaled, so it was fine. Yeah, 